How many times do you go to your fuse panel, open it up, try to read this messed up chart here, and you're like, man, this doesn't line up. Uh, stuff doesn't look right. I got handwritten stuff here, scribbled stuff over here. What do I do? Well, today we're going to show you the proper way to map out your fuse panel here and make a nice little chart to put on here using Excel. All right, so getting started, you can see, you know, this this old chart here just has so much uh, redundant information, like like uh, general light here, general light here. Well, which one is that? That doesn't tell you anything, does it? And then over time, we've come in uh, as we were doing the project, and we added uh, stuff in here that we found and added them to here as well, you know, things like this. We know there's no longer a wall unit, so this whole thing has to be redone. So what we do is the first thing you got to do is you want to measure here because whatever this distance is, we're going to put a plastic sheet protector here and then we're going to print a new chart and the chart's going to hang in there. Okay, so you need to know how much this area is. And then later when we go to print that chart, and what you have to remember is when you're printing out in Excel, and we'll show you this later on the computer, when you print out, you have to scale it down. And it, it'll, it'll be trial and error. You'll have to print out a couple of times until you get it to the right size. But I try to print it out so that it fits the maximum amount horizontally here to still be able to slide down into the sheet protector. All right, so where to begin? Well, you know, I'm very methodical about these kind of things. And there's patterns in life, and there's patterns here in your fuse panel as well. So if you look here, uh, um, you'll notice there's 12 slots going down here, okay? And it's the same amount on this side, even though there's fewer switches, but some switches take up multiple slots. So if you start with that, your greatest common denominator here, and what I did, you can see I started a chart here where I got 12 lines on the right, and then the same amount on the left, knowing that some of these switches take up multiples. So for example, this first one over here, this is a, a double pole here, this takes up four switches. One, two, three, four, see? So it's very easy to mark him off on there. So that's what I do first, is I go on and I make a thicker border around the switches that I know are bigger or, or doubles or quadruples, like all these other ones you see. They're usually your major appliances. So th whenever you see the 50 there, that's a dead giveaway. That one's going to be your electric range, your oven. So you can see I've got it right there as the oven. And we've, we've tested it too, so we already know. And same thing with right here. If you look closely here at this uh, other one right here, this is your hot water heater because you got two of the 20s tied together here. So right down here we put the water heater and it takes up two slots. And same thing over here with your with the other double 20s, which is right here, right below it. That was the water heater right there. This one right here we've tested and we already know that that's the outside air compressor for our air conditioner that's sitting outside just outside our patio. So these are kind of like your free spots when you're playing bingo, right? And then if you look at the very bottom on the left, there's an unused slot opposite the switch that's on the right. So we're going to put that as unused. So you can see we've already rapidly started filling up our chart here. And then as we come over here to this one here, we've already tested, we know what this one is. This is our air handler because it's, it's got the 30s on there. The dipole, the, uh, the 230s. All right, so, and we've indicated that here. And remember, it, it takes up two slots also. And then uh, below that one, we know we have the washing machine and the small appliances. We're going to go and just double check that. But let's see, below that one here is this other one here that's got the, the 220s here. That goes to your dryer. So we're going to mark the, that off as the dryer. Now, all the rest of these that are open now, we have to go and figure out what they are. So how do we do that? Well, it's a process of elimination. And it goes a lot better when you have your buddy working with you. Even one or two people is better. Because somebody can be over on the other side of the house yelling, Yeah, that works. So one useful tool I use is one of these outlet checkers here. And I usually just plug it into the outlet and both the LEDs come on when the outlet is working. So you can just 
flip off the panel switch over on your electrical panel and if you see the light go off then you know that that switch is controlling this outlet okay so let's go ahead and try that so this right here is the switch that we think is doing it so let's see if it has a, an effect on that yep so you can see the lights have gone off on it so let's go back now and switch the switch back on and make sure okay we're gonna flip the switch now see how the lights came back on so we've confirmed that that switch is controlling at least this outlet here but we need to check the other ones because this could be on a separate circuit so we've seen before in kitchens where your counter outlets can all be on a separate circuit all right so this time i've moved it over to the right side of the stove let's do the switch yep so they're on the same circuit and continuing around the house in the same fashion we test all of the other outlets and lights and we complete our map so there we are all complete we're going to take this back and get it in front of the computer and enter it into Excel where it will be nice and perfect and you can always edit it at a future date too if something changes or you find a mistake Okay, so here's our printout here. And so let's just quickly review what we've done here. I kind of do things in, in somewhat of a color code. So as you can see here, anything that, that's, that's hot or generates heat, I usually put in red. So up here you can see here's where we've got the electric range. And then the hot water heater is here. Then the microwave oven is here. And the washing machine over here and then the clothes dryer is there okay and uh, you can see there was 12 slots and usually they do two four six eight ten all the way down they usually do one side even and the, odd, the other side odd yeah, you can do it whichever way you want um, I, I tend to follow the convention that's engraved onto the metal panel right next to where the switches are so yeah so the red is hot there and um, likewise anything that's cool like air conditioning is going to be blue right here so here's the ac compressor that goes outside the condo and here's the air handler and then the other blue here is the refrigerator i usually make that a different shade because i try to have adjacent cells be a different color from one another okay and uh, let's see the, the garbage disposal and the dishwasher I left them the same color because they're on the same outlet box. So in this case here, the garbage disposal is on the upper outlet and the dishwasher was on the lower outlet. And then anything that's yellow is usually a lights, you know, because lights yellow. Uh, so lights and, and electric outlets, are, I put them yellow. So they're easy to find. So when you open the box, your eye is immediately directed to where it needs to be. And this is uh, makes the most logical sense for me. <clears throat> so I'd come up with this system a few years ago and I've been using it ever since and then here at the bottom I have the GFI outlets for the master and the guest bathrooms they're both controlled by this one circuit I usually outline it in red to kind of indicate it that it's a GFI uh, usually the GFI outlets will often have a red button on them so that I just kind of use that and this gray one here of course is unused so that pretty much covers uh, what's happening on here now you'll notice too See here, uh, well here all of the lights are on this one. But on this one over here, you'll see it says master bedroom lights and two outlets and the family room east outlet. So there's three outlets on the east wall of the family room. So sometimes in condos where they have limited space and stuff and they make small panels, they'll often mix the electrical outlets with the, uh, the lighting. So they'll sometimes be on the same circuit. I'm not a big fan of that because I have always felt that, you know, that can cause like flickering of the lights if you have certain noisy 
machinery or something that you're operating or, or an appliance, you know, things like that. Um, and then you don't really know well, what kind of wiring did they put in the wall. Typically for outlets, you'll want 12 gauge wiring, maybe if you're gonna use 20 amp, who knows. And then 14 gauge for lighting. So, you know, that's sort of the way they've always done it here in, in condos is they'll mix and match sometimes on here. Here's another one here too, see the master bedroom the other three outlets of the master bedroom, along with both of the bathroom lights are all on, on one circuit. And then in the kitchen, you just have two little outlets on a wall in the, in the kitchen here on the, near the floor, and they're on their own circuit, so go figure. So let's cut this out and get it installed. And now here it is in place on your electrical panel box. And this will make it a lot easier for you because now it's computer typed, which is a lot easier to read than somebody's you know bad handwriting and scrawling and doesn't make sense. And it tells you where everything is at a glance. So this, folks, is how you perfectly map out your electrical panel.